Good day and welcome. Today, we're starting an exciting series on the basic unit of life, cells. In this series, we will learn more about the cell as the basic building block of all living things and can only be seen under a microscope. We will identify the main parts of plant and animal cells, such as the cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria, vacuoles, and chloroplasts. Here's a question for you, what do you think the acronym DNA stands for? Share your answer in the comments below. Stick around until the end for some thought-provoking questions to test your understanding. Challenge yourself and see how well you've grasped the material. It's a fantastic way to boost your confidence. Please do not forget to like and subscribe so that you do not miss our weekly uploads. Let's get started. A cell is the basic or smallest structural and functional unit of all living organisms. Cells are microscopic and cannot be observed with the naked eye. Cells can only be seen under a microscope, they are microscopic. There are two types of cells, plant cells and animal cells. Plant and animal cells differ in shape and function, but have certain parts in common which are present in all plant and animal cells. The cells of plants and animals all have a cell membrane, nucleus, cytoplasm and organelles. Organelles, such as mitochondria and vacuoles, are structures that are present in the cytoplasm of the cell. Organelles are structures in the cell cytoplasm that carry out cell functions. Let us briefly look at the parts in plant and animal cells that are similar. Plant and animal cells have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, and organelles such as mitochondria. Imagine your school has a security gate at the entrance. This gate controls who can enter and leave the school, ensuring that only students, teachers, and staff members are allowed inside, while strangers or unwanted visitors are kept out. The cell membrane works in a similar way for the cell. It is a thin, living, and flexible layer that surrounds the cell, keeping all its contents together, just like a fence around a schoolyard. One of its most important roles is to control what moves in and out of the cell. This means it is selectively permeable, allowing only certain substances to pass through. For example, it lets oxygen, water, and nutrients enter the cell while allowing waste materials like carbon dioxide to exit. Without the cell membrane, the cell would not be able to maintain a stable environment, and harmful substances could enter freely. The cell membrane makes sure only the right substances enter the cell, keeping it healthy and functioning properly. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance that fills the entire cell, much like water filling a balloon. It holds everything inside the cell, including organelles, which are tiny structures that perform different jobs to keep the cell functioning properly. The cytoplasm is not just a filler, it plays a crucial role in the cell's activities. Important chemical reactions take place here. It also helps to support and maintain the shape of the cell, ensuring that everything inside stays in place. Without the cytoplasm, the cell would not be able to function properly, as the organelles would have no space to move and carry out their tasks. The nucleus is one of the most important parts of a cell because it acts as the control center, just like a principal in a school who oversees all activities. It is a spherical, round, structure found in all living cells and is surrounded by a nuclear membrane, which separates it from the rest of the cell. Inside the nucleus, there is a liquid called nucleoplasm and a smaller, dense structure known as the nucleus. In animal cells, the nucleus is usually located near the center, while in plant cells, it is found closer to the edge due to the presence of a large vacuole. The main function of the nucleus is to control all the life activities of the cell, similar to how a brain controls the functions of the body. It contains DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, which holds the genetic code that determines the unique characteristics of every living organism. 
This genetic information ensures that a mouse is different from a cat and that every human has unique traits. DNA determines inherited characteristics such as eye color, hair color, and height. Each person's DNA is different, except for identical twins. Children inherit a combination of DNA from both their mother and father, which is why family members may share some features but still look different from each other. This genetic variation is what makes every individual within a species unique. Organelles are structures in the cell cytoplasm that carry out specific cell functions. Each organelle is surrounded by a membrane that separates it from the cytoplasm. The nucleus is an example of an organelle, but there are also other organelles that occur in cells. While some organelles occur in both plant and animal cells, others are found in only one type of cell. Each of the organelles performs a different function for the cell. Organelles like mitochondria, singular, mitochondrion, and vacuoles are present in the cytoplasm of plant and animal cells. Mitochondria are small, spherical structures found in the cytoplasm of both plant and animal cells. They play a crucial role in providing energy for the cell. Often called the powerhouse of the cell, mitochondria are responsible for cellular respiration, a process that breaks down glucose from food to release energy. This energy is essential for the cell to carry out its life processes. The number of mitochondria in a cell depends on its function. For example, muscle and liver cells contain a large number of mitochondria because they require more energy to perform their tasks efficiently. Vacuoles are fluid-filled sacs that are surrounded by a membrane. They are used to store substances which can then be used by the cell. Animal cells usually have several small vacuoles or no vacuoles at all while plant cells usually have one or two large vacuoles which store substances such as sugars, salts and water for the cell. Vacuoles are organelles with large cavities and are mainly present in plant cells. Plant cells have large vacuoles while animal cells contain small vacuoles. Vacuoles in plant cells are permanent. Vacuoles in animal cells are temporary or absent. Plant cells and animal cells share many similarities, but they also have key differences. One of the most important distinctions is that plant cells have cell walls, chloroplasts, and large vacuoles, which are not found in animal cells. The cell wall is the outermost layer of a plant cell and serves as a rigid framework that provides support and protection. Unlike the flexible cell membrane, the cell wall is non-living, strong, and rigid, ensuring that the plant cell maintains its shape. It is primarily made of cellulose, a type of carbohydrate that allows soluble substances to pass through while offering structural strength. The functions of the cell wall include giving the cell its specific shape, making it sturdy, and protecting the inner contents from damage. Animal cells do not have a cell wall because animals rely on their skeletons for support and protection. Chloroplasts are oval-shaped organelles found in the cytoplasm of plant cells, particularly in the green parts of plants such as leaves and stems. These organelles contain chlorophyll, the green pigment responsible for the plant's color. Chlorophyll captures energy from sunlight, which is then used, along with carbon dioxide and water, to produce food in the form of glucose and starch. This essential process is called photosynthesis. Unlike plants, animals cannot photosynthesize because their cells lack chloroplasts. Instead, animals must obtain energy by consuming food. Large vacuoles are important structures found in plant cells. Unlike animal cells, which may have small and temporary vacuoles or none at all, plant cells typically contain one large vacuole. 
This vacuole is a space in the cytoplasm, enclosed by a membrane called the tonoplast and filled with cell sap, a liquid containing water, nutrients, and waste products. The main function of the vacuole is to support the plant cell, helping it maintain its shape. It also acts as a storage space for food and waste materials. This large vacuole plays a crucial role in keeping the plant firm and upright, which is especially important since plants do not have skeletons for support like animals do. That's all for today. Before we conclude, take a moment to attempt the following questions before the answers appear. You can pause the video as you go. We'll meet again next time to discuss cells in tissues, organs, and systems. Be sure to check the link in the description for more resources. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss our weekly updates. Thank you for watching, and take care.